Hi, my name is Rod Dewar from Fronius Australia and today's session we're going to go through how to install Fronius solar battery with the Fronius hybrid inverter. So I've unpacked the battery here and it comes with instructions uh, inside the box and we're going to run through the instructions and video um, each individual step so you can see how to do it. Okay, so the first step of the installation involves removing the top cover, the two screws, and then removing the six screws on the side cover. You can either remove the right hand side or the left hand side, it doesn't matter. Uh, and then we'll go through mounting the battery to the wall. So when the box is removed, inside of here have two DIN rails. So these are for the DC fuse holders and earth connection. Then you have one here for the Unigate to clamp onto. You have here two cable glands, so one will be for your DC coming in from your inverter and the other one will be for your communications cable, your Modbus RS485 communication. When the cables come through, they get run through these toroids, these filters. Uh, it just helps to, um, for noise suppression. The two lugs here at the back, um, these are for mounting onto the wall. So once you've got all the modules in and everything's nice and level, you would use this to mount onto the wall. Okay, so we're just going to go through the contents of the box that's uh, inside the, the battery there. Here, yeah, so got some warranty instructions. So first bag here, this has all the battery um, from, from the inverter into the fuses, all the cables um, for the actual battery power flow. And you've got the, the packet with all the communication wiring between the modules. And then underneath this flap, You've got the two fuse holders, DC fuse holders, and your earth connection point, and then a uh, communication cable for the, uh, to the, the Unigate here. Okay, so the next step now is to uh, unpack the BMS and wire up the, the BMS. This is the box that comes in. So here we have the BMS, the front side, uh, and the back side here. Peel back some of this protection tape. Okay. So here's the connection area uh, of the BMS, and this is we're going to wire the power cables and the various cables that need to be wired onto here. So now we're going to um, remove the safety covers from the battery connections and the inverter connections to the BMS. So. Remove these with the Phillips head screwdriver. Okay, so then I'm going to get the cables of the bag and we we'll connect to these points here for the battery and the inverter. Okay, so now we're going to screw the terminals for the EB plus and B plus, EB minus and B minus here. So we'll st if you look at each cable, um, it's marked with, so here's EB plus and the cable is marked for the exact cable that you need to use. So we'll start with the AB plus here. So that's the AB plus. So we'll then do the B plus. So you can see here there's the B plus on the cable. Okay, now the AB minus. So you can see here the AB minus marked on the cable. There's the B minus, you can see it's, it's a longer one. So the B plus goes to the batteries, so the battery units, uh, oh, the positive of the battery units, and the B minus goes to the, the minus of the battery units. The EB plus goes to the off to the inverter, positive terminal, and the EB minus goes off to the minus terminal of the of the inverter. Okay, once we've done the battery terminals, then we put on the earth terminal. So the earth wire that comes with the kit. So use the end, follow the instructions and use the end which has got a double wire coming into it. So remove the PE terminal here. 
So this is to unearth that will run off to the battery unit and also to make sure every part of the system is, uh, is earthed. It's quite a small screw so just be careful tightening it up. Okay, so now we're going to wire up the BMS to the Unigate, so the power supply. So the, the Unigate requires a 12 volt DC power supply that comes from here. Now, out of all the cables, all of the cables come with the um, um, solar battery package, except for this cable at the moment. Now that's going to be changed soon, um, and the up and coming batteries will have all the cables already wired. So, but at present, this cable is not with, uh, with the kit, so you need to make your own up. So you just use um, just a small gauge um, DC cable you can use here. So for your positive negative, this is 12 volts, not much power. Let's make a little loop here. Make sure they're nice and tight. Okay, so now we're going to put the BMS into the top and start wiring up the fuses and the Unigate here. So first we remove the, the cover here, we'll loosen it off. This is the clamp to clamp the, uh, the BMS into the unit, stop it moving around. So now we take the BMS that we wired up before with all the wiring and slip that in through this way here. So the plastic coating, uh, I haven't removed that at this stage because we're doing a demonstration, but otherwise we'd take off the plastic, uh, the plastic coating that you've got. On this okay, so now we're going to mount the fuse holders. So for the the DC coming from the inverter, it's a positive and negative, and then we have the earth cable here. So we'll tighten this earth to the earth rail with the middle screw. Then here you have the B, B minus into the socket, you can see at the end here um, the cable stripped. Put that into the socket here. Because you're dealing with DC, you want to make sure that's nice and tight as well. Then the other side, the EB plus. So you see the red here into this socket. Then we have the earth terminal here, which will take one of our cables, and take the shorter of the two, so the one with the without the lug on the end, go into here. Okay, so then after that we will start doing the uh, Unigate, which uh, comes in this spot here. So, Unigate comes um, in this box when you open it. And um, there it is there. So what the Unigate's for is that's to convert from uh, Modbus communication in the inverter to CAN bus which the uh, BMS uses. So it goes in this direction here, so these terminals go towards this way and just clicks in like that. Okay, so now we've got the Unigate here. We'll start by connecting the communication from the BMS to the Unigate using this cable here. So an RS422 cable. It screws in here. and the other end plugs in to this side of the Unigate here. Like that. 
Then we can start wiring up the power supply. So here, this is the 12 volts power supply from the BMS is powering the, the Unigate. So that goes onto this connector here. So to make it easier, we'll um, unplug that. So you just get your screwdriver and you can unplug it like that. It just makes it easier to get to the screw terminals. So on this here, pin one is the positive. And pin two is your ground, your negative. Okay, now we've got that done. You can plug that in here. It's a bit tricky to get it in. So make sure it clicks in. Now the next step is the Modbus communication from the inverter or from the meter, depending on which way you've got the, the meter. If the, um, the battery is in the middle and then the meter and the inverter, you can have it in any order out of the three devices. Um, so in some cases you may only have one uh, Modbus uh, cable coming in or you may have two. This Modbus cable, it's just a Cat5 cable used in this case to come through the battery, curve through here, and then connection to the, the uni gate. Take this off, sit through here. So you've got different uh, cable sizes you can use, just remove whichever one you need, and these are the blanks to put in that spot. Because we've got a demo unit, I'll just leave them all off for the moment. Put this through one of these. So that needle will need to pass through here as well. Because it needs to go to this um, shielding bit here. Uh, so I haven't got a shielded cable at the moment, but you need to use shielded cable uh, and have the shield connected to here and then strip the rest of the wires to come around at um, this point. So we've got the Modbus cable coming in. Now we've I've fitted that all in already. Uh, I have the uh, insulation is stripped off. And just to get the length of the cable, we'll make sure it's all sitting properly. But to actually wire the Modbus into the terminal plugs, it's better to probably remove it. And just put it on the top of the BMS and, um, and wire it up there and place it back in. Just can get to it a bit easier, that's all. Okay, so now we're gonna be wiring up the Modbus connection, so the three wire Modbus to the Unigate here. So there's a few different connections you can use uh, RS422 or RS485, depending on how you can configure uh, the cables here. You can see here if you join some of them together, then it makes it RS485. So let's say we've got it on the table here because it's easier to put together. So I've made up these uh, little link cables because you need to link um, four of the pins. Uh, two to each other. So it goes from pin 7 to pin 5. Let's do that one first. And then from pin 6 to pin 4. So the D plus goes to pin 4, D minus goes to pin 5 and then you ground it's on pin 3. So we have them paralleled in. And this is then the ground cable into pin 3 here. be the way the wiring looks once you've finished. Now we're going to put this back into where it was before. So plug 
plug in the cable here. Then communications cable on the back again. And then this cable here, we're going to reroute like we had it before through here. Screwdriver. So you just push that spring loaded down and it holds it in there. So as I said before, this should be a shielded cable and you strip the shield back so that the shield has an earth connection here. I just didn't have a, a, a shielded cable with me. So there we go. Go. Okay, and now that we've wired up the Modbus communication, we're going to wire up the DC and the earth from the inverter to the battery. Okay, here's the DC gland here. So, we've got the little stops in the middle there which you can use. I'll just leave them out for the moment because it's a demo model. Just through here and then run our cable through here. So this is where your earth would also come through. Run it through the toroid here. So you may want to mark which ones you're positive and which ones you're negative on here. So this is a negative cable. Okay, so now the wiring is completed here at the top. So we can then push the BMS back in, get it nice and level at the front, and then use our bracket here to hold it in place. Tighten it in, and use your screws to screw that down tight. We've completed the top part here. Uh, now we're going to go down to the, to the side and put in the power modules, the battery modules and wire them up and wire up the communications. Okay, so now we're going to remove these um, brackets on the left and the right hand side so that we can insert the modules, the battery modules, into the unit. That's the other one here. Okay, so in the box here, um, it's got some of the safety precautions uh, in the polystyrene, packed in plastic. Then you've got this plug here. So this is your safety plug. So there's no voltage or dangerous voltages on the uh, terminals of the battery until this plug is plugged in. So you need that for afterwards. And here are the two screws for uh, securing that safety plug. Putting the battery here. So one thing to watch out for is the front. So this is the front. So you have your terminals coming out to the front here. Just be careful when you're pushing it in to hold up at the back so that it doesn't drop down like that. And you have your first module in there. Okay, it's the second module. Okay, now we've got the two battery modules in here. We're just doing a demonstration, so I'll just put in two. You normally need a minimum of three 
the four and a half kilowatt hour battery and then up to 12, up to uh, uh, eight or nine modules you have in there for the, for the 12. So once you've got all the battery modules in there, rest to use a spirit level, try and keep the level everything up so it's nice and straight. And now we'll go ahead and uh, wire up the communication to the battery modules and also the power. Okay, so now we'll start off with putting the mounting bracket or the securing brackets back on and making that there's an earth connection. So you've got two earth terminals here with the earth. So unscrew those. Need to do it on each battery terminal, depending on which one you, you know, if you've got multiple batteries there. Okay, we'll take this is from our bracket from before, the one with the earth terminal you can see, goes on the right hand side here. lines up here. So we'll just loosely screw in our screws here. So it's holding. And then with this here, screw this through. So this is to give this gives the uh, earth of the batteries a um, connection so that actual modules of the batteries are earthed through the whole chassis, continuous earth. Okay, let me screw these in. Give us an earth connection. Then we mount the other side as well. Off before. There we go, okay. Now we'll probably start with um, the earth terminal. So on here, it's one thing I did forget. Here we'll get the earth. So run the earth wire from here. Bring down these cables now that we had before. Okay, let me roll this up a bit. This is there. So this is our earth. Runs on there. There's a lug on the end. So here we've got the battery cables that we um, wired up before to the BMS. So as you can see, the negative one is a um, uh, the negative one. Just follow that back. Good. So this is your positive. So this will just make sure you get this right, by the way. Um, double check, so this is your positive and this is be your negative. So this is a long cable just in case you've got a lot of uh, different battery modules there. So in this case, we, we don't need it to be so long. I've got a couple. So there's these little plastic clips on here. So these are safety clips to you know, stop people accidentally touching the terminals. As I said before, when I was unpacking the box, there's no voltage on these terminals at the moment um, until you put in the, the safety switch, the power connector there. So we'll just remove these little clips. And we'll wire in our battery positive first. So once you've got all there, we'll probably get some cable ties and cable tie this up so it's nice and nice and neat there. So what we want to do now is um, we have all the short cables, so the batteries are all connected in series. So you want to run a little cable between each battery to, to have them uh, running in series. That curves around to here. This one.
try that up. Make sure those are really nice and tight. So that's how we you can see the series running from negative to positive. Same again from the negative to positive, the next one, and so on, as shown in the manual. So once those are nice and tight, then we could replace the little safety caps. Okay, so now we've got the battery uh, power wired up. Um, we'll wire up the communication, so the communication between each module and to the BMS. So one of the long communication cables that you've got in the, in the bag with you and your termination plug um, will fit them. So you run from, run, and there's only one way the connectors can go around as well. So it plugs into here, plugged in correctly, and run that up to here. Then, so from each module after that, so this runs into uh, this port here. Then, from each port, you piggyback them like in a daisy chain form. So, you go from the small connector, the top, clicks in, goes into the next one here. Like that. If you had the next module, you were going from this one to the next one. So, on the very last, whatever is the last module, so in this case we've only got two, then you need to put in the termination plug, like this, you can see there's a bit of a heat shrink on the end. Uh, in this case, that would go into, into this one here. Okay, because that's the last battery, so that'll go, go further down. Okay, so the next step then is to set the address uh, on each battery they come standard, so this is a binary address so that the BMS knows uh, which battery it's talking to. So what we need to do there is start from zero at the top and work your way down, one, two, three, four, five, etc. So here's this number zero, it's the first one. So the second one here will put set to number one. Just need a very small flathead screwdriver and when you, when you put it across, just make sure it does click into spot and you'll hear a little click there. Now we've set the dip switches uh, on there. Just have a double check that your wiring's correct, uh, especially the polarity. Um, just the cables are labelled, just make sure that's all correct. Have a double check of the manual and etc. And so the very last step is then putting in the safety plugs. So once you have the safety plugs in, then the batteries are energised uh, to, the, to the BMS. So they just power up the slip in like that. This one again, and then you just put in the got the screws. You screw in the little safety screws uh, in here to hold it in, in place. So once we've done that, that's all the wiring. Then the side cover can be put back on. The BMS can be put into its proper place, uh, and the covers can all be fitted. Okay, now we've completed the installation of the Frony solar battery. So just as you're going along, just make sure that you check all the battery connections and all the communication connections um, over again, because uh, there is quite a lot of things that can go wrong uh, in terms of your wiring. So I just want to make sure everything's right. Uh, really go through the manual step by step. So the manual that you'll see at the moment that we went through is more involved uh, than the battery will be later on. So in the next few months, we'll be shipping the batteries from the warehouse uh, in Austria with a lot of the Unigate and a lot of the other things already wired up. So it will be get, will get easier moving forward. So, hope you enjoy uh, Frony's solar battery.